we've done take after take before the different um, uh, different thing like when I was um, uh, I think I told you in the last video I uh, my interest you know right now for the most part I like and I know a little bit about is um, uh, comic book collector some of you may think that's funny that's okay I think it's funny um, and I play a little guitar and I actually do have a little guitar in here. I, I, I'm going to keep it in my pocket. And people say, hey, are you a musician? I go, yeah, I play a little guitar. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, uh, uh, what I decided to do is since I figured out how to create a YouTube channel, after all these years it's been out, I've watched them. I didn't know. I figured you had, there was something special you had to do. But no. Anyways, um, so uh, I decided to do this. Um, I've watched enough videos where I know that... Um, I'm learning some of the terms now that uh, creators of their content um, uh, have been doing this. Uh, many, many, many people um, in the hopes to get sponsors to get money, and they do it for a living. I, you know, I mean, they make good, 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 real good money. There's easy money out there, and uh, I'm not saying it's easy work, but um, um, I mean. Uh, Ever since I was young, I, I, I all the jobs I've done were uh, manual labor. I didn't I didn't study in any particular field, so I ended up, um, you know, doing whatever. But the thing was, uh, I've always been pretty happy. So I, I you know, I, I I don't know. Money money's a fun thing, it's a great thing, it's a good thing, um, but I don't know. I just never I never you know. Uh, I tried to do real good sometimes, uh, you know, uh, with some of my jobs, and it's like, I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's a strange thing. Sometimes you get promoted when you don't think you're going to, sometimes you don't get promoted when you think you should. But anyways, uh, that's the, um, I guess, what would that be, the introduction or the... The monologue? No, it's not a monologue. It wasn't funny. Um, but the uh, um, the beginning of this video, and I'm going to take the rest of the time, try and keep this uh, to about half an hour, and I'm going to go through the stack of comics. Uh, if you remember, if you guys watched the first video, I don't think it's that long. I think it's like 15 minutes. Uh, but I pulled this box out. Boom, thing fell because my hand cramped it up. Then my foot cramped it up. Well, what's with the cramping? Somebody says take vitamin D3, and so I've been taking it for a couple of months now. Um, I haven't cramped up, so maybe it works. I don't know. Anyways, uh, but this uh, box is empty, and I got them all stacked right here. So I'm going to go over, adjust the camera, sit on my butt ski right here. I've got the lights so you can see the comics, and, uh, you know, um, that is what is most important. So just bear with me here. I can actually zoom in. Ooh, there you go. That's the only zoom I can do. And then I can... I'll be sitting my lazy behind right about there. And, okay. And I think that should be sufficient. And my voice hopefully should pick up good. All right. Change this light a little bit. And we'll see how she works. I'm hoping. Works good. Because the way I got them stacked, last video I had to go backwards, but this video I can go forward, so that's what I'm going to do. So, each box consists of, um, I think, If all your comics are um, uh, bagged and boarded, like these are, and I think I told you in my last video that every one of my comics, and I've got around 5,000, it took me a year to do it, but yeah, I went through every one and graded them. And it's the simplest thing in the world. Okay, so this is Action Comics number 293. It was printed in 1962, and I gave it like a good... You know, maybe very good. So if somebody offered me a good price for it, you know, I might take it even a little less. But I, I, want, I want to take more than I paid for it. But 
or at least get my money back. But if uh, if I'm grading a comic, I hold I hold it up to the light. And when the light reflects off it at a certain angle, you can see uh, creases, um, a tear, a crease or a tear that you might not see because it's 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 within a certain color scheme where it, it seems to be hidden. Um, you can see if there's any gloss left. Is when the comics are first printed, they have kind of like a glossy cover. Um, if somebody wrote on a pencil or pen or spilled coffee or coke, um, and it's very light stain, boom, somebody wiped it up real quick. Um, I've got a, what do I got? I got a Not Brand Act number one. Beautiful copy, uh, but it's got somebody set a coke on it for just a second, and somebody said, hey, stupid, you know, boom, tuck it off, bam, wiped it real quick, but there's that light stain. So when I bought it, I think I bought it at a very good, I still think it's, you know, I, I, I want to get a fine price for it. But the longer I sit on it, you know, it'll go up little by little, so I'll get that price anyways. Because the price I paid for it uh, never changes. That's the nice thing about business. All right, so uh, this one, yeah, I look at it, I, I do that, boom, I check the back. Some people wear gloves. I know my hands are clean and then I count the pages and I check every page if I set this page on my knee I'm not bending I'm not letting it fall all the way over so it's a nice casual thing my hand is you know spread open and then since you hold the thumb up like this you kind of fan the pages when you fan the pages your thumb you know gravitates to obviously the first page second page let me check to make sure there's no ink no pieces missing no pages missing. And I count to eight. When I get to eight, I know I'm in the middle of a comic book and I can see the staples. This staple has rust on it. So there was some sort of moisture. If you're selling a comic and, you know, like I say, I have notes on this. If somebody inquires, if I sell it on eBay or whatever, I got to disclose that. But you can see the, you can see the ink on the outside. I mean, you can see the, the water damage right there. So... But for me, I don't know. I, I have some perfect comics, and I have many average comics. This is not a bad comic. Water is not my worst enemy. I don't care. I hate when there's chunks missing in the cover. Um, if there's uh, an ad page missing, I don't like that. Um, if the cover is missing... Um, um, like, excuse me, if it has uh, lots of um, uh, stress lines and creases and... Like I say, I don't like when pieces or chunks are missing or uh, big tears. Um, if you've got a big tear that somebody, I don't know, tore from here to here, not necessarily from here in, but I've seen comics torn just the uh, front page from like the centerfold, you know, maybe from a little spine split, then it, you know, tore like that. Uh, I don't know if some kid got his finger in there, whatever. But it, if you can hold it there and line it up perfectly, and I would think you could, and used a, a piece of um, uh, tape, and I know nobody recommends this. I'm the only one who does. But right now, right now with that ripping it, your comic book, you know, some guys will say it's not even a good. It's like a fair. But other than that, the comic book is perfect. For me, I'm thinking you slap a little, uh, you know, half inch by half inch, quarter inch by quarter inch, or even a thin little strip that's no longer than, you know, you know what I'm saying? The smallest little piece of scotch tape Boom, just put it there for um, uh, a little bit of uh, stru uh, structural integrity. I, um, I got that phrase out of the Overstreet Price Guide, which I highly recommend, by the way. But anyways, uh, that's what I do. Count the pages, check the pages, um, you know, look for tears, uh, look for crayons, marks, things like that. There's also a thing what uh, they, they, they did when comic books, you know, started becoming a... Um, um, kind of a, a big deal and I guess that was sometime after 1970 but they may have done it prior to that but uh, um, um, if a comic book uh, like for this comic book this comic book has what they call uh, a rolled spine so they had stuff on top of this so over the years and this the, the big book stack of books that were on top of this you know somebody would come up maybe knock it once so it would shift a little bit so he would grab the top of the um, uh, comic book and kind of pull it and, and pull on the spine so kind of tweak it out that's why you see kind of the back of the comic book coming over uh, that's why they call it a rolled spine because it, it's going to roll one way or the other it's going to roll where the back is coming up toward the front or it's going to you know vice versa but um 
Anyways, so this one, this one has a rolled spine, and you can also tell because it reflects here. Um, you know, Newton's laws of physics for reaction. So here's your reaction. Um, but with uh, uh, some people, automatically, boom, very good. Uh, come, now I've got, um, well, I've got a, um, I can tell you which one, but um, uh, I'm actually going to show you later. But um, uh, I've got a. Um, a a desirable comic book uh, that's in very good condition. It's a key issue, um, and uh, it has a rolled spine, uh, but it's a solid, very good. I haven't sent it to CGC, but I know. I mean, I, I will not take anything less than a very good price for it. So, you know, but um, I don't know. I have a, a pretty good sketched out plan with the with the comics. I think I've sold about all I'm gonna sell. I've got some uh, um, regular, regular comics. I'll, I'll, I'll probably get rid of just to muster up a couple of bucks. But by and by and large, I, I'm gonna keep this collection, especially the key issues that I have left. All right. I said I didn't want this to be long, so I am just gonna zip through this. There's um, no reason not to. Okay. These are all gonna be all actions. Boom, boom. Boom. I've graded every one of these and on the back you can see I have the um, title, the number of the magazine, the date, the condition, and any uh, notes. Uh, the reason you would put notes on it is, uh, let's say there's uh, no damage on the front cover, but there is damage um, on the inside pages. Well, you're going to want to note that. I'm going to, if I, you know, um, am, am checking, I've got a, um, uh, a computer log of this. I use one of those uh, programs, and uh, it took me a long time to put them on there. I got a few actions. No, I don't think there's any key issues here. So, okay, action. I think we're getting into a time when, yeah, I think this is when, yeah, because I think I remember buying this one as a kid, this first Parasite Man. I don't remember buying this one. Three, four, two. Or that one. Now. We're getting a little bit better. That one was probably very good. This one's like a fine. But then, in 1973, but then, then we go back down, boom. Even this 1974, but I, I didn't get it in that good of shape. This one's more up in the fine range. Now here we go to Adventure Comics, 10 Centers, 1960, issue 275, but the bottom dripped off. Okay? So, obviously, it's like in a pour. But the rest of the comic book is all there, and it's, uh, you know, uh, it would be, you know, if the, if the cover was there, was complete, this would be probably a good, good, very good, you know, it's not in bad shape if the cover was complete, you know, um, the inside's not bad looking, um, but uh, the reason a fellow might want to keep this instead of unload it is because it's the origin of the Superman-Batman team, and uh, that's one reason um, to, you know, keep um, keep certain copies. If they have um, uh, either, uh, I think I said this before, either um, like a, a new writer who ends up being a really great writer or a new artist who is, you know, uh, good or great and can only be greater, um, or uh, new characters, new villains, yada yada. Um, uh, origin stories are always killer, and since this is uh, 1960, Superman had been around, what, 22 years? Yeah, 22 years, okay? Uh, not a long time, really. Uh, so I don't know how many origin stories they did. I have some old newspapers, and um, uh, they did an origin story in that. Now this one has a lot of color. I dig this one. I think I wrote on there as a stain, but I, I put it close to the flying condition. Okay, 
Now another adventures. Boom, boom. I hope these are coming out. I know I have the light in the right position. Are we in adventures of the unknown? Yeah, no, right here. Okay. I got a few of these. These are kind of cool. I was watching a video on YouTube and uh, the guy was going through all the um, uh, horror comics that had um, appeared on the stands in the 1950s and it started, I don't know, maybe the late 40s or very early, 1950, 49, 50, whatever. Um, but EC Comics was, you know, by 1950, uh, three, they were leading the pack of, um, you know, best-selling, gross, murderous, uh, gratuitous sex. No, you can't say that. Um, yeah, basically that's what it was, but uh, I think that's a word you're not supposed to say. Um, not on YouTube. It's a, you know, they give you a strike or whatever. Um, okay, Adventures of Dover Boys, number one, 1950. Good condition, it's readable. But you know what? You never heard of the Dover Boys, neither have I. Dover Boys. I would say Dover. Arr, arr, arr. Adventures of the Fly, number 27. Adventures of the Fly, ball, number 30. Adventures of the Jaguar, number 7, 1962. Okay, now we get into some nice marbles from. I don't know, I like Amazing Adventures. Uh, number four, bam. I have number one in another pile. There's Amazing Adventures of 12 with the Beast. Um, here's another one with Beast, number 13. I, I don't know if it's 14 or 11. One of them is a good one to collect. Here's Anthro, DC Comics, their, their um, new character, 1968, number one. I tried to collect a lot of number ones. Aquaman, Aquaman. I never, I don't know why I bought him. I guess I kind of liked him at the time because he was on the stands and I, I thought, well, if you put him up there, he must be a good character. Army Attack, I got two of these puppies. This one's better than this one. Nice, you can tell the difference, right? Yeah, brighter color. This one's duller, like this one was on the top of the pile. This one has a terrible crease. Yeah. All right. Army attack. Army war heroes. And some of these, you know, if I show them, they might get mad at me. Like this one. So I just won't show it. And that way, as long as I do everything correct, they'll have to put my videos up. So, man, yeah. Arg was uh, Mad's um, later version, 1975, of um, a spin-off of, you know, a, a bit of a Mad Magazine type humor, just, you know, off the wall. Uh, Attack. Another soldier comic book. Okay, The Atom. Boom. Start with number eight, baby. Number nine. Number ten. Number eleven. Number twelve. Number 13, number 14, number 22, 25, 35, do I hear 36, 36, do I hear 37, 37, in the back row, 37 going on, so 38, I have a 38, then they changed the name to Adam and Hawk. And figured they would boost the sales. See, he wasn't doing good. Boom, boom. Didn't boost the sales. All right. After Adam, it's only one place to go. This won't, uh, this won't hurt. Avengers. I know you guys like that. Number 10, beat the heck. Add pages out, but it is a good reader copy. Does have tape, bam, on the spine. Fair, I mean, I, I, that's a sticker. When I was putting stickers on comics, I was probably maybe 1996 or something. I, I, I still, I graded um, uh, wishfully. Oh, this is this near mint. Well, it's not near mint, baby. I know what near mint is now. Yeah. Some guys, they wouldn't even put this in their collection. It's Avengers, number 10. There's also extra staples. Wait, why am I wasting time? I'm supposed to go fast. Okay. Uh, I think that's a somewhat desirable um, cover. So therefore, Avengers 16, I think is a 
Okay, comic. I got a couple of these, and some are pretty nice. Number 18. Here's the first Swordsman. Here's a, I, I think, not a classic cover, but I think this is a desirable cover. Here's the very first um, Power Man. Yeah. And here's Wally Wood drawing Cap and Power Man. Wally Wood is great. Thinker, man. I would love to ink Wally Wood's, or have Wally Wood ink my stuff. He's dead, though. Look at that. Bam. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, I bet just 25. One I gave a fair, one I gave a good. Dr. Doom, you can't go wrong with Dr. Doom. That is a desirable cover. Still not a, you know, real valuable comic book. Um, what I said, I think one a fair, one a good. So the good one, uh, Dr. Doom, let me guess here. I look at a price cut all the time. Uh, 25, Avengers 25, Dr. Doom and a good one. This one probably goes for about issue number 25, maybe 25 bucks. Maybe about 25 bucks, maybe. Right now in good condition. Get a near mint, I don't know, maybe 600? Somewhere around there. Uh, Avengers 26, nice condition, got two of them. Okay, here's 27, here's 29. I got two number 30s. We're getting like in a very good fine condition for that one. The other one is good. Uh, 31, got a couple of them. Nothing spectacular. Very good. Oop, don't get too run away. All right, got two. Uh, the thirty twos. I had I had like five thirty twos. Here's number thirty three. I, I had seven thirty threes. I, I sold so many and I didn't make much money on them. Uh, thirty four. Oh, I give this one a flying. I think I'm gonna give this a new bag and board. I'll do that after I turn the camera off. Here's a couple of these. I must have had six or seven of these. Issue number 35. Red covers are, um, they're, um, you know, um, it, when, when, if you have a, a red cover or black cover, when it gets those spine creases, what it does is it breaks color, okay? So the color is printed on this, but if you, if you bend it, Bend, bend, bend the piece of paper where the color is, the color uh, flakes off and it leaves the white paper underneath. And that's what causes, that's what uh, um, those stress lines are, okay? So, um, uh, but they really show up on red and black. Um, now this one has red, but not on the spine so much. But, you know, here you can see the white line. If this were a black comic book, you'd see that white line, obviously, because white's the opposite of black. Um, uh, but for some reason, red on comic books, you'll, you'll, it'll really stand out too. Now, if you've got a white comic book, or lots of white up here, or even light, lighter colors, yellow or light blue, whatever, uh, it, it won't show as much. But you can still see it, and if you're selling your comics for any kind of decent money, um, buyer is going to, um, he's going to scrutinize it. So I know I would. Ba bam Number 38. Okay. Probably covering up part of the, I don't know, I'm moving this. And that one, I don't know why I did that, but I'm going to put over here and finish this up. I know this is over half an hour. Okay. With Hercules. Bam. Number 39. And i got two of these. Number 40. Very good, very good. Okay, 41. Okay, 42. Bam, look at them. Looks like they're about fine condition. They're a good one. Okay, 43. This one, a lot of action. I remember them commenting in the... Somewhere, somewhere I, I read how, you know, Marvel kind of went... Uh, had a lot of fun with that cover. Boom. Issue 45, issue 56. This one, issue 58, I put in Mylar. 57, I think, is a key issue. I never had it. Uh, 64, uh, early Batman, 1962. Terrible condition. Uh, issue number 150, maybe good. Issue 175, maybe good. Um, issue 180, centerfold is detached. I don't know how well you can see these. I think this is when I started buying or at least asking for comics. I was just a kid. Um, here's the first Scarecrow in the Silver Age. I have a couple of them. I'm looking for a particular one that I could have sworn I remember buying. Maybe it was I don't know, somewhere else. I got issue number 200. It was really 
popular issue one you know back in 94 95 96 uh and I, I ended up getting this one a year or so later maybe late 90s um in some deal i bought a, a collection of comics and this this was in there but it had the uh, top ripped off but when i did the math on the um see i'll make a bid if i meet with somebody and they have you know, 20 boxes of comic books, you know, I'll say, how much do you want? And there was uh, one guy, I think he wanted 750 or $800. And I looked through them and I, I think I, I think we ended up, uh, he went down about 200 bucks, I think. Or maybe he wanted close to a thousand. Either I paid 600 or 700. If I paid 700, I think he wanted, his asking price was around a thousand and we settled on 700. Or, um, yeah, he was asking seven fifty, and we settled on six. But I paid between six and seven hundred dollars. So when you when you count you count how many comics are in each box, you got twenty boxes. And uh, generally, if you got a bag and a board, you can fit uh, I think almost about one hundred seventy five comics, almost two hundred comics in a in a long box. Um, so uh, two hundred comic books times ten boxes. I have 20 boxes, but times 10 boxes is going to be 2,000 comics. So I doubled that, so there's 4,000 comics. 4,000 comics divided by um, $600 or $700. And I came out to an average of... Ch -ch -ch -ch. But the comics, as I went through them, I mean, there were some great... In fact, in that collection, I got a Spider-Man number one. It was, it was ripped. I only paid 11 cents for it. I gave that one away. I gave that to my son. Um, but I had another issue anyways. I bought from a guy at a Comic Con for 450 bucks. Yeah, but that one was in about in good condition, but I still should have hung on to it. But anyways, all right, here's Batman number 200. I had that one, blah, blah, blah. and some of these, I think, now I think I bought these. So there's about four with stickers on So I got these at, the, I believe, LA Comic Con with my son. So, uh, boom. A couple of these aren't in bad shape. And I think the guy gave me a pretty good deal. Uh, battle action. See, there's battle one. See, I get there's certain words I can't say on YouTube, and there's certain um, uh, pictures I can't show. To a degree, I, I agree. You know, when it comes to um, keeping certain material away from uh, children who have access. If regular television had pornography, that would be unacceptable. Um, um, the same as, you know, I, I think comic books, magazines, and, you know, all forms of media really have a, uh, a obligation, um, you know, depending on their audience. I mean, it, 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 it's weird because government kind of has to step in and say, okay, you know, you can do this and you can't do that. I don't know. I don't know. It, it gets really crazy. And if I, if I get um, thinking about it, um, then... It's frustrating because there's not a little guy like me can do. Uh, behind prison bars, number one, 1952. So, trying to show kids or young people. They say back in the day it was um, young people and, and, and even adults. A lot of adults read comics back then. They didn't have to tell me that. I already knew that. Because I know adults read them nowadays. I got Beowulf, number one. Boom. Black Magic number one, got a couple of those. Like I said, I tried to collect all the, um, um, if I, uh, mostly number ones, but if I thought a comic book was hopefully gonna go up in value, and I was not a good judge, but um, I would try to buy a couple issues when I could. Uh, I found a guy who had hundreds of issues of Wolverine number one miniseries. So I, I bought 20, 20 copies from him. Um, and, um, uh, now that one, uh, I've done the math. I know what I paid for it. Uh, all I'm going to say is that I should have bought a hundred copies from it, because out of all those comics, I have uh, two or three that I have saved. I, they're they're buried, um, uh, but those comics are uh, anywhere from a near mint plus, uh, possibly a mint. I mean, I'm looking at nine six nine eights. I, there's one, I, I, I think it's possible it could be a 10 because I can't find anything wrong. I, I've done everything. There's not one crease bend, ding, ring. It's perfectly centered. The corners are sharp. Every page is there and white. It's, but, um, you know, I consider myself uh, knowledgeable, but, you know, I, I got to say that the guys who do it every day, 
and the old timers, uh, and I'm kind of an old timer, but there's guys who know it better than me, but um, I, I generally come in pretty good. When I deal with my dealer down the street, and when I deal with um, um, the dealer um, who's one of the biggest, um, you know, internet guys, um, I don't know what I'm supposed to say as far as names, if I should mention names of people, it doesn't really matter, but um, uh, when I send in my comics, boom, and, and have this guy uh, check them out, and, you know, because he says he's, you know, you look at their website and they say, yes, we're buying these comics, and I says, I got those, and I go, and I don't care about them. So I send them to him, and I tell him, oh, okay, this one's in good, this one's in good, this one's good minus, this one's very good, so on and so forth, and he says, all right, if they're that great, we'll give you, you know, uh, 342 bucks. I go, okay, I send him away. He has his boys check him. Then they send me back and they say, okay, here's our grading compared to your grading. I'm always within uh, like uh, uh, a half a grade. Sometimes I'm a whole grade out, but not very often. It's generally a half grade, but uh, I think more often than not, well over 50% of the time, I'm right on the money. And the same with uh, my dealer down the street. When I sold him my um, good comics, we uh, agreed, uh, I believe, 100% on the uh, conditions of the comics I sold him. And then he took the comics and he had them graded by CGC. And I've seen them when they came back. Um, uh, CGC gave them a better grade than I did. So... And they were good comics. I've got a few nice uh, Black Panthers and a, a few more comics. I'm going to do those and I've got to cut this out. I know this is over half an hour. This could be like an hour long thing. And finally I got the lighting right, but it's getting late. I don't want to keep talking because, uh, you know, my neighbors, um, they, they go to bed early. And so, anyways, a Black Panther, bam, in a fine. Uh, good looking comic. And it only gets better. I bought three of these from one guy. Here's number nine and a near mint minus. Get a gander. I mean, beautiful color. I had to put that in vinyl. And a number 10 in near mint. So when you're talking about the uh, 22, 22 40, 43 year old comic in near mint, it's not bad. Um, Blazing Six Guns, number one. Try to get as many number ones as I could. Bomba, number three, but I do have number one. Here's but Nan's number one. It's got a rolled spine, some water damage. Missing little pieces, but it's um, not missing any big pieces. I thought Bonanza number one was one of the comics I had because I got the Get Smart number one. No, I thought it was Bonanza. It wasn't. It was some uh, show, My Fair Martian or something. But anyways, it, it has lots of big chunks missing. This one I traded. It's the Walt Disney uh, guy's name's Bongo and Lump Jaw, which reminds me, I woke up a few days ago, but my. But, you know, you go to bed, you're fine, you wake up, your jaw's all swollen. I'm thinking, and it hurt. Oh, oh. I'm going, what the heck is that? And, you know, I didn't know. And uh, then it dawned on me later as I'm thinking about it. Uh, um, you know, it's probably an impacted wisdom tooth coming in. I'm thinking of my age. But um, uh, it, it wasn't excruciating. It hurt, and it was swollen. You could see it. I looked like, you know... I don't know, one of those guys got the big jaws, but um, think of the, uh, an athlete kind of uh, guy, not a hockey player, but whatever. Anyways, they're a boxer. No, they got flat noses, but my nose is kind of flat anyways. It's been broke. Um, but um, see, I lose my train of thought. I'm thinking, what does that got to do with comic books? Okay, now this one is um, uh, interesting because it's uh, Boots and Her Buddies, 1948, typical uh, comic book from that era. Uh, it's, you know, of course, um, uh, targeted for uh, young young teenage girls, okay? And um, um, you would think issue number five, well, if you had issue number one, that'd be better, right? Well, the thing is, is uh, back in the day, and I'm not positive about this, but one thing I've learned over the years as an old man is that everything, everything, everything evolves around money. I mean, you, you, you do get, um, you know, some situations where, you know, if there's a disaster, people come out and in the goodness of their heart, they, you know, um, just give you their all. Okay, so I, I know there's that, but by and large, you know, under regular circumstances, you think of Wall Street, you think of any of the big corporations, you think of Hollywood, you th any, any, any product you buy. I mean, they're not in it for the fun of it, they're in it to make money, you know, and I understand that. Um, 
but uh, it seems that um, uh, that oh um, that this comic and many others just like it um, will have an issue number five, but in fact, uh, it's issue number one. And the reason is, is issue number one through four were probably entitled, um, I almost lost my train of thought again back then, um, but issue number one through four were, uh, uh, had a different title. Um, and, and I've seen this, I can, I've seen this, you know, in the price guide, I've seen it in real life in the comics I've had in there, you know, when I've had consecutive, and I do have consecutive uh, issues like uh, the, the comic book Journey into Mystery by issue number, um, what is it, 120, 126, it, it turns into the magazine Thor. Now Journey into Mystery, um, um, their uh, big selling point was that's where Thor originated in Journey into Mystery number 83. And then the kids loved it, so 84, 85, 86, they would start, you know, uh, putting him on the cover and see your favorite, you know, hero, you know, Thor, and he's got his hammer. Um, so that's where he took off, and he was so good, you know, they go, all right, you know, because you don't, if, if you're a publisher, you're not just going to give a, a character that you don't know if the public's going to like or not, even if you and, you know, your staff like the, the character, um, you, you're generally not going to give them, give him his own, or her, uh, her own, um, uh, title. So uh, what they would do is they would take a title that wasn't doing so good and they would give it a new title and I think uh, financially they, they um, uh, avoided uh, like maybe certain taxes or penalties or um, fees that are incurred probably um, it must be from the government it would have to be. I couldn't think of anybody. If you're a publisher and you're publishing it, I mean, your printer's not going to raise the price uh, just because you, uh, you know, create a new comic book. But there's a particular reason why they will, you know, keep the numbers the same but change the title. And I guarantee you it's financial. Um, and I would bet almost anything that it has to do with, um, you know, the government. There must be some fees, some regulations, or, or something you have to abide by, yada, yada. So anyways, Ruth and her buddies, uh, she first appeared, bam, issue um, number five. So you can't find Ruth and her buddies issue number four. So uh, this is number one. It's um, 1948. You know it's corny. Yeah. But it, it's the same thing, you know. It's uh, obviously, uh, you know, she, she's out there, um, uh, young beautiful young lady uh, Buzz Studley here he you know he goes hey how you doing and uh, you know uh, um, um, cool cat um, Gallagher he goes hey man you know he's thinking that's, that's 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 my you know hey man uh, so you figure inside they're probably gonna have a fist fight Boy Commandos, bam, number one. But this is a, a Bronze Age, 73, so it's, um, uh, now if it were Boy Commandos from the Golden Age, different story. Okay, Brave and the Bold, number 48, bam. I am, I'm like, I gotta be pushing now, or Brave and the Bold, number 79. See, if this is too damn long, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna keep it, I'm gonna get rid of it. Uh, Brother Power the Geek, weird one by DC Comics, very good. Water on the spine, I got two of them. When I found him at the, um, the dealer, and I got issues number two. Two of those puppies, too. Then you get Captain Action. And yes, I've got two of them. There's number one. There's number two. There's number four. I do have number three. There's number four again. This one's in fine condition. Good little comic. Captain Action number five. And then last comic, Buzz Sawyer, number one, 1948. There's a piece missed, missing on the 15th page. Um, but this is how they were, 1948, mid to late 40s. Okay, so that's going to do it for um, uh, comic books, comic book, comic books, YouTube, number two. And then I'll, um, I guess if this one uploads pretty quick, 
if you know um, YouTube doesn't you know they scrutinize it they don't have any problems with it um, uh, then I will do you know hopefully quick quickly I think I, I don't know if I said because I made so many different uh, attempts at this video and I didn't have the lighting right I didn't have the sound right now I've got the sound up and I've got it on manual I've got the lights facing this I was in the dark the last couple of videos which isn't such a bad thing but um, um but uh, uh, yeah I will make a, um, a video number three and a four and every video I can quickly just go through the box I, I don't want them to be an hour long like this one like I say I may redo this but if this comes out you know some, somewhat entertaining I may just uh, uh, post it um, uh, I'm going to look for mistakes and things that you know that YouTube's going to look for because I don't want them I don't you know I don't want them to uh, I don't want to keep making mistakes and have these guys keep rejecting it I mean Anyways, so that's it. Um, uh, if you're collecting comics, I hope you, you learned a little something. I don't know if I was on this version, if I was real educational or not, but um, uh, I did share a lot of stuff. I know I was talking. I did, you know, these monster drinks, they really um, a little bubbly, which is okay, you know, but um, uh, I don't know. They, they, they give you a little uh, pick-me-up. So thank you, monster, and uh, thank you to... All that watch this video and hopefully you get something out of it and I will see you on the next video. All right. Bye